Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this short clip, I want to talk about the main structural differences between building a cob home and a framed straw clay home. And the frame system here also applies to hempcrete. So these two prototypes I have designed out here in SketchUp, I've built both of these two buildings. And so I can show you the real life photos and videos from these as well but let's let's run through the SketchUp models here so let's just take a quick look at the foundations and there's not much difference between doing a foundation for cob or straw clay but this also applies to straw bale rammed earth adobe um, and several other building methods a strong foundation is critical for the longevity of any kind of structure. And this is kind of the way I like to do foundations. There's um, a number of ways you can set up a foundation. This is what I've found works for me, at least. There are other ways, and I have other videos covering those ways as well. But let's stick to this main uh, concept of foundations here. So we have a slab. This is a concrete slab reinforced with metal rebar. And on top, we have a stem wall, this section here. And this stem wall basically lifts your cob or your straw walls up off the ground and helps to protect them from rainfall splashback and water runoff. This is critical, in my opinion, if you're in uh, any kind of temperate or climate zone that gets a lot of rainfall. If you're in an arid or desert climate, the stem wall is not as critical. You can just go with a flat slab and lay your wall right on top of the slab. So you'll see here we have a, a regular slab on grade. Now if we go over to the cob house design here, um, I don't have it fully designed out in the model here, but on the actual cob building that I've constructed, uh, what I recommend is a reinforced concrete slab. So basically it's thicker underneath where the walls are. So the section of the foundation where the walls set, that part of the concrete slab is thicker and it's deeper there. Whereas in the middle of the structure, it's thinner. And this reinforced slab is good for any kind of masonry style wall system because they're really heavy and they need that extra um, the extra thickness to the foundation there. So let's go back. Um, you'll, you'll also see in the cob house we have the same kind of stem wall. So it's really the same. It's a concrete slab and a stem wall. It doesn't have to be made out of brick. It can be um, stone, concrete block, concrete, any kind of water resistant masonry material. I do like the brick. That's my material of choice for the stem wall though. Now going back here, the actual wall system itself. Now you'll see it's all framed. So on top of the stem wall is what's called a sill plate and this is attached you don't see it in the model here there's actually metal bolts they're called J bolts these J bolts integrate from the stem wall up through this wooden sill plate and it's the it bolts you bolt the sill plate tight down to the top of the stem wall so that creates the integration and the transition point from your masonry foundation to your wood framing. So on top of the sill plate we have what's called a Larson truss and that's basically just um, two separate two by fours with um, spacers in between. So you can adjust the length of the spacer to whatever width you want your straw clay wall to be. Um, it's a really easy wall framing system to set up. So in this case, these are nine and a quarter 
long. So if you wanted, let's just say, a 16 inch wide straw clay wall, you would just adjust these spacers to conform to that measurement. And so with the straw clay system, similar to hempcrete, you're gonna put up, basically temporarily tack up plywood on the outside and inside of the Larson truss, and then inside the void, pack your straw clay or hempcrete material, and then remove the siding and you have your wall being formed. Um, it's the same with the Cobb slip form method, which I've shown in lots of my newer videos. This is That's the system I use nowadays. Um, or you can hand sculpt the Cobb. Uh, but you'll see there's no wooden framing inside the cob walls. Cob walls do not have wooden framing inside them. That's not to say you can't put cob or you can't put framing inside cob. You can, but it's not traditionally the way you build cob. Normally, there's not wooden framing inside of cob walls. So the difference here is a framed system infilled with the straw clay material or the hempcrete. Whereas Cobb is just a solid, uh, solid mass monolithic Cobb wall. Now here, another difference is the window insulation system. This highlighted section here, I would call this a window buck. And you basically create the buck, set the buck at whatever level you want to be. Um, and then you attach it, usually with screws, to the, um, the wall framing system, the Larson trusses. So this is really easy to set up. And then you just fill in the sections that you want enclosed with the straw clay wall. So that's really easy to create. With the cob, it's a similar system, except you have to um, install the window buck as you build the wall up. And I have another video on this. I'll leave a link in the corner here. Um, it shows more in detail the steps taken to install the window buck. But basically, you build the cob up to this level, install the window buck, and the window buck for cob looks like this. You'll see this section on both ends. This is the permanent part that's embedded into the into the cob wall and all of this in between here this is all temporary just to create a void and a space to build around and so in the end all that comes out and you're just left with these um, the exterior window framing and these um, window anchors which are embedded into the cob wall itself and so you continue to build up the cob around that until you get to the top and then you install either a lintel or a bond beam on top of that depending on the height of your cob wall. So the window installation systems are a little bit different. Um, and then as far as the transition between the wall system and the roofing system on the straw clay frame system, you have what's called a top plate this is a uh, two layers of dimensional lumber stacked on top of themselves. This creates what's called a top plate. And this is a very easy transition from the wall framing to the roof framing. Whereas with Cobb, we have a different system here. This is a concrete bond beam. And then the top plate is actually fastened and bolted on top of the concrete bond beam. And then that creates your easy roofing transition. So you can also do with Cobb, if you don't wanna do the concrete bond beam, that's more work and sometimes not necessary. You can actually just double layer two, um, I guess you could call them top plates, the same way we did here on the straw clay structure. You could just double layer across the whole top of the wall 
and skip the concrete section. And then again, you'd have your transition from cob to your roofing. So these are some of the main uh, differences in components between creating a cob structure and a framed straw clay or hempcrete structure. And again, the main difference between a cob structure and a straw clay or hempcrete structure is cob is high thermal mass, low insulation. Straw clay hempcrete is high insulation, low thermal mass. So it's going to depend on uh, what you build is going to depend on your climate zone and um, some other factors such as uh, your timetable of building. The cob usually takes longer. There's more labor involved, whereas the hempcrete and the straw clay is faster to frame up and, and to infill. So these go up faster, these kind of structures. Cob goes up slower. Um, so it just depends what you want. Um, and what kind of climate you're in, if you want high thermal mass or if you want high insulation. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them below in the comment section. And I'll get back to those soon. And thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to learn more about cob building and natural building, I've got a whole online video course for you. It covers pretty much everything from foundations to building the walls, to putting the roof on, how to install windows and doors, how to do natural plasters and paints and finishes, and pretty much everything in between. Um, it's over 20 hours of video that I've recorded and covers more than most hands-on classes will ever offer at a fraction of the price. So if you wanna get some online education before taking a hands-on class, it's a good supplement too. You can go grab the course it's all online for download. You get to keep everything and um, you'll learn a whole lot. If you have any questions, you can also contact me directly as a student and get your questions answered. So um, there's a link down in the description. Go check it out. Thanks for watching.